Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Here we share beginner-friendly coding tutorials on Scratch, Roblox, Minecraft, web programming, and many more. Today we're going to make a tic-tac-toe game using Python. In this project, I'll teach you how to make a tic-tac-toe game using Python. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So let's begin by starting a new project in Python Idle. From here, the first thing we're going to do is import tk enter. So the first line we should write from write tk enter, and we say import. And here we import everything that we have. So we would put a star. Next, we also want to import the message box from tk enter. So here again from tk enter, import message box. Next, let's create our tk enter. Here we can declare our own variable called tk. And we'll make it based on the capital T, lowercase k, and uh, the little, and close off the brackets. This is Python way of making our own TK enter object. And now we can set our new title for the game. So we can go into our variable TK and do the dot title. And here we can set it to new title. Now let's change the name for the TK enter that we have created for ourselves. So let's go into TK and we'll access the title methods. And here we'll set the game to tick, tack, toe. Next, let's add in our squares. For a tic-tac-toe game, we have nine squares in total for a three by three box. For each square, we use a button to represent the square so that when we uh, click on the square, we know that the button has been clicked and then we can try to see if that square has been taken. So here we'll declare buttons and we'll set it equals to string var. This will allow us to detect if there's any changes. Next, let's start our first button, which will be our top left button. We we'll name this button one. And button one is gonna be declared as a button here, we're going to put it in our TK object. Next, we can set the text to an empty string. So I'll just put a space bar. This is how we know that um, we haven't touched it yet. Now we can give it a font. Here, I'm going to give it a font called um, Times New Roman, font 20 and bold. And then I can set the background color, which I would say is gray. And then I can set another front ground color. Now set this to black. Next, for the font size, I will use heights of 10 and the width of 20. And we'll assign the button a command. The command would take in lambda. Sorry. The command would take in lambda. And it will call the function called button click. Button clip would take in an input, which will uh, pass in the button that we have. And uh, we can declare uh, this button like this. And now let's set the button grid. So we can do that by doing button one dot grid. Here we want to put in the location where we want this button. For the first button, we want to put it in row equals one and columns equals zero. This would be the top left position. So it would be the first row and the first column. And here we write sticky equals S plus N plus E plus W. And this will allow us to fill this uh, the whole board with our squares. And here S, N, E, W stands for South, North, East, and West. And this just means that this will expand as far as it can. So now let's go ahead and finish our other nine buttons. And now let's go ahead and finish our other eight buttons. The declaration will be the same, so we can go ahead and copy and paste this. And the only thing we have to change is the name uh, for the button, the parameter in the, uh, in the function call. And then we have to change uh, the button one to button two, of course, and update the position. So let's do that real quick. So we change this to button two. The font size, text, everything else could stay the same. And here, where it says button click, we want to pass in the parameter button two instead of button one. And now let's change button two dot grid. Here we'll be in the same row, 
but the column would now be one. And uh, let's do button three. So again, I have copy and paste the code I wrote for button one. I'm gonna change this to button three, and then go change this argument to button three. And now I'm changing button three dot grid. And again, it will be in row one, but it will be at the last column. So here we'll put column equals two. And again, we can copy this uh, basic layout for all of the other buttons. So here I'm gonna quickly make all the buttons. So I'm gonna make button four, button button four, set button four dot grid. And here, since um, tic tac toe can only have three by three, so uh, we have actually filled up the first row. So here I'm gonna say row equals two and call them school one. This will be the middle most left square. Now for button five, it will again be in the second row, but it will be in the middle column. So here for button five dot grid, our row should be two and column should be one. And button six, again, is gonna be in row two and uh, we should put the column to be two as well. And again, don't forget to change the arguments that we have put in inside of our button click. And now for button seven, we're once again going back down to the third row now. So here, button seven dot grid should have row number of three and column number of zero. And now button eight. Here we change button eight, button dot click. And button eight dot grid will be in row three, column one. And finally, our last button, which is our bottom right, button nine. Here we're going to change the arguments of button nine and button nine dot grid will be at row three and column two. Now let's save this. So now let's define the function that we made called button click. So let's go ahead and go underneath our title and we can write defined button click. And here we know that it passed in the buttons, so we can say buttons. And we can use a semicolon to see to say that we're defining this button here. So in button dot click, we want to see rather the user is on circle or on an X. And to do this, we'll actually set a new variable, and this variable is going to be global, and we'll call it uh, <clears throat> and we call it B click. And B click will tell us rather to put a circle or an X. So over here on B click, let's just define it as true. In the beginning and now let's check if the square has already been clicked on and um, if it hasn't we can see uh, which one to put in whether a circle or an x so the first thing we should check is if the buttons and we'll check the text property and we'll check the text property by putting text here we're trying to check if it's equals equals to a space which we have originally defined it as. And if it is, now we can check if B click is true or false. So now we can say and B click is equals equals to true. In this case, um, since we have set B click to true, um, this would be the first uh, player. So I usually play circle first. So here I can say buttons and we can change the text now and we can set it equal to the string uh, X. We can change it to the string circle since we are starting circle first. Next, we should flip B click. So next time we call this, B click will be false, and then we can put in an X. So here we can set B click and we set it equals to false. Now we should have an else if statement. So we can put EL if this is an else if. Now we can check if the buttons um, dot click is still empty but B click is false. So here, let's check the text here and we make sure that it is equal to an empty string. And now if B click is equal equals to false, now we will instead put in an X. So here we will change the buttons at text and we'll set it equal to X. And now again, we have to flip B click. So again, we should say B click equals true. 
And after each time we click a button, we also want to make sure that user have not won the game yet, or we sh should check if the user has won the game. So here we're gonna have a function called winner. And when we're taking buttons, and it will tell us if we have won the game. So to win in the game of tic-tac-toe, we need three in a row, or three in a column, or three in a diagonal. So in this case, we should check for all three cases. So here, let's define our winner function, and we know that it will take in buttons. Here, let's check if the user using the O has won the game. So here we say if, and let's check the first row and see if they have completed the first row. So here we can say button one, which is our top left button. And we ask that the text again, and we see if it's equal to circle. And then we can say equals equals O. And, the button two also has to equal uh, O, and button three also has to equal O in order for the user using O to have one using the first row. So here we can say button one dot text is equals equal to O, and button two, and we access the text property, and we'll check if it's also equals to O. And lastly, we also check button three, and we see the text, and if it is equal to O again, that means that the user has one. Another way they can win is using the second row or the third row. So let's do that as well. In this case, we'll use or, since the user doesn't necessarily have to use all of, three, all of these three, and only one condition will win them the game. So here, let's check for the second row. So the second row consists of button four, five, and six. So here we'll check button four, and button five. And again, we're just looking at the text and see if it's equals to O, and now we can check button six and change text and see if it equals O. And then another way they can win is if they have three in a row on the third row. So here we have another or, and now we'll check for the bottom row. Here we we have button seven, button eight, and button nine. Here I have button seven equals equals to O, button eight, and let's check if it's equals to O, and lastly, button nine. So basically the OR statements allows us to check for any of these winning conditions. And if either or any one of these conditions are true, that means the user has won. Another way the user can win is by having three in a column. So let's try to do that as well. For columns, we know that one, four, and seven, two, five, eight, and three, six, and nine will be um, <clears throat> will all be the same if the user is one. So here, let's go and check button one, four, and seven. So let's see if button one is equals equals to O, and button four is equals equals to O and button seven and again we're always going to be checking the text and if it's equals to o or here we check for the second column which consists of two five and eight so we see button two and we check if it's equals to o and now we check if button five and see if the text is equals equals to o and uh, lastly we'll check button eight and see if the text is equals equals to L. And now let's check for the last column, which will consist of button three, button six, and button nine. So here, button three, we'll check if the text is equals equals to O. And if button six, see if the text is equals equals to O. And button nine, we'll check the text and see if it's equals equals to O. And finally, there are two other ways to win. That would be the diagonal. So the diagonal, you can do two ways. Either you can go one, five, and nine, which is from top left to the bottom right, or you can go from the 
top right to the bottom left. And here, um, let's do the first top left to the bottom right. So the top left will be button one. So here we'll check if button one is equals equals to O. And then we can check if button five, which is our middle button, is also equals to O. And then we can check the bottom right, which is our button nine. And we'll check if it's equals equals to O. And lastly, let's check the last diagonal, which is top right to bottom left. In this case, it will be button three, button five, and button seven. So here we check button three, see if it's equals equals to O, and button five, and see if it's equals equals to O. And lastly, button seven, and see if it equals to O. And now we can close off our if statements. So the end makes sure that all three conditions has to be true in order for it to be true. While the or allows any of these conditions to be true, to allow the whole thing to be true. So let's type here. So after this if statement, we will follow up in a semicolon to define this following line is going to be inside of this if. And when the user is one, that means we've entered this if loop. And now we should display the uh, message. And we'll do that using the message box that we have imported. So we can type message box, and we can say dot show info. And now here we can write player O wins. Just like that. Now we can do an else if statement. And this else if, else if statement will consist the same thing as everything in here. So what we can actually do is just copy and paste this. And instead of O's, we'll be checking for X's. So here, I'm going to change all of these O's into X because the pattern is going to be the same. We're going to be checking for the first row, and then we'll check for the second row, and then the third. And then we'll move on to the columns. So we can check first column here. And again, the only difference is we're checking for X's instead of O's. And then we can check the second column. And now the third column. And then we can check the top left to bottom right diagonal. And then finally, we can check the top right to bottom left diagonal. And here, again, we can use the message box to display the result. So we can do message box dot show info. And here we can say player X wins. And that would define, that would be the all for our winner function. So the last thing we should do is actually make this on the loop. So at the very bottom here, after all of our declarations and our grids and uh, button de uh, decorations, we're gonna write TK, which is our uh, TK enter uh, object. And we say dot main loop, and we'll pass in empty parameters, and this will start running the game. So now uh, this will actually be our tic-tac, <clears throat> and this will actually be our tic-tac-toe game. So that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and like our videos. Also, check out our other two videos here while you wait for our next video. Thank you, and bye-bye.